spirited comeback. How frustrated are you with the way in which you started the game? Such an important game still with your, your finals hopes alive. Yeah, um, clearly the they were much better in the first half and, you know, deservedly in front. And you know, it's probably my responsibility at the end of the day because the, the way we set up, obviously, from recovery from the last game and they had a week to prepare for it. So, you know, there's an element of flatness early on which is based on one team probably having six or seven days to prepare. And, you know, we've had a, a really sharp turnaround again. So, so yeah, it was disappointing. And then, you know, I can praise them, obviously, because in the, in the second half, you know, we put them under a lot of pressure. They still had moments as well, but I really felt we could probably even get something out of the game at 3-2, and, and we didn't get something out of it. But, you know, the most important part was didn't completely throw the towel in as well because, you know, when you're looking at 3-0 and it's a very difficult... Um, you know, situation to lift the group at half time and, and, and still make them believe that they can get something out of the game. So from that part, uh, I'm proud of their, you know, resilience to get back into the game. Still a fair part of the season to play out, but does that almost sum up your campaign a little bit? It feels like you've been on the verge of something and, and you're just falling short? Yeah, I think so. I think that's a fair assessment. Um, you know, some really good periods and then some really average periods that are consistently costing us. Um, you know, obviously everyone's had a similar, you know, situation, but for the type of football we play, you know, high intensity brand of football, such a congested schedule, you know, probably doesn't suit the way we want to go, but I believe in that way. And I believe that's the way to go, you know, in the long term to, to transform what we want to do from this place. You know, we've, we've made a lot of progress, you know, you know, I was looking at it today. I mean, you know, with five games to go last year, you know, this team was in the same points tally as Perth Glory and finish the season, you know, scoring 23 goals and, and we've transformed that. And But we wanted more as well and, you know, that that's also part of being ambitious and, and striving to get better. Can you still make the finals? Look, 37, 38 points looks like it might be enough. So 37 points are still available. I think what's important regardless is mentally to, to regroup quickly from tonight. You know, we've got another short turnaround, even shorter turnaround this time, 72 hours. And Central Coast obviously have had the week to prepare as well. So what's important is, um, you know, we get back, recover, mentally freshen up, physically freshen up and, and get ready for a derby match. Arthur, your adjustments at half time certainly look like they uh, maybe caught the Wanderers unawares or you maybe caught them out with some of the weaknesses that they were showing. Could you just walk us through what did you tell the boys in the dressing rooms at half time? Yeah, look, I mean, they were they were playing with the diamond in the midfield, which meant they had four players, and in the first half they could find the spare man consistently, um, and pressing with their the two attackers hitting our centre backs um, from the outside in. So we went to a back three. You know, we used wing backs and and obviously added an extra midfielder to to make sure that we weren't getting outnumbered when we had the ball. Um, you know, in parts it was you know it worked quite well. Other parts, uh, it was clunky as well. It wasn't perfect, but uh, I, I think it posed them obviously a different problem to what the first half was. Um, and, and, you know, like I said, credit to the, the players that came on, credit to the whole group because 3 nil down half, you know, at half time is difficult for any team and it can easily become a lot worse. And if anything, you know, we, we go back in and we're disappointed, but we know that the spirit, you know, of that group is, is very strong and the togetherness to get back into that situation, you know, in the west of Sydney. And I know um, the season they've had, but, you know, that's that's an outstanding squad of players, to be honest, you know. I really think individually that's that's right up there with the best squads in the league. So we know they've got the weapons to hurt us as well. And like I said, you know, we, we fought back, which is pleasing at least. The way you're talking about the improvements that you've made as a squad, we also saw during the week um, some coaches and the Jets staff are moving on. I think others are taking on some roles. Do you feel as though off the field now you're really building a foundation for this club moving forward as well? You've got the on-field stuff. You can see the philosophies there, but you're also making moves now to establish an off-field foundation for your project there? Oh, I'm sure there's a lot of reasons why some things have happened off the field as well, but it's not really where I concentrate so much, to be honest with you, Joey, because, you know, it's a big enough job um, having a first team that plays every three or four days. And, and like you said, you know, there's I'm sure there's there's reasons to, to keep improving as an organisation and, 
and culturally. But, you know, like I said, I've been really focused on the first team and a lot of those situations are sort of, you know, in other areas of the club, you know, with you know different reasons. And we saw um, Oli Bormal come off, I think, in the 24th minute of that game. He looked to be a bit ginger. Was it injury enforced or was it a technical sub? Yeah, injury enforced. Do you, do you know what he's done? Is he going to be available against the Mariners? No, I'm not sure yet. Like, uh, obviously, we just wrapped up and haven't caught up with the medical staff yet. But, you know, it was um, something where he didn't feel 100%. And in the context of a game anyway, you know, we needed to add an extra midfielder in. So, you know, bringing in Costa at that time and not playing him as a winger and playing him inside probably steadied us just that little bit at that time in the game anyway. Any other injury concerns coming out of this one? Uh, not that I'm aware of yet, Joey. And just looking ahead, you've got meeting with the Mariners on the weekend. Obviously, it's a big rivalry. You got a taste of it in round one, but mm. you haven't had a taste of it since. <laughs> it, it, and you've got two games against them to come. D is there a spoiler factor involved? You know, you want to get one over on your rivals and sort of end their finals campaign just as much as keep yours on track? I think it's a derby match, Joey, you know, so I don't think regardless what the context is, it's it's going to be important to get a win in front of our fans in a derby match. That's the most important part of that game and, and how it affects everything as we play out the remainder of the season, you know, will reveal itself as we go along.